Hey there, y'all. Time for a What's Up Wednesday. This is Amanda with Tattoo Mom in the Bag Brigade. In case you hadn't figured that out. <laughs> uh, I kind of thought about doing an, uh, like an impromptu live and decided against it in case I said something I didn't want to want everybody to know. I, don't, I know a lot of y'all don't watch my devotionals, so y'all might not have seen what... Anyway, uh, I've been a little absent the last few days. I've been putting, I've been putting out my videos pretty steady, and then boom, three days. But anyway, um, I don't know how much... Some of y'all might just jump ship, I don't know. But... Um, I don't tell a lot of people this because they th then they think I'm some sort of weirdo or uh, I'm deep off into delusional or something like that. But uh, my whole life I've had what's called ESP. If you never had it or ne never heard of it, it's not being psychic. It's it's called it's called extra sensory perception. And I've been told many times in my life, you are extremely perceptive. Yes. So, this goes back to when I was very, very young. Um, and, you know, and sometimes it just, my, my mental health medication suppresses a lot of it. And so when it rears its head, it's really kind of shocking because it's really sporadic. It doesn't happen often, and a lot of times it's very unwanted. I don't really want to think about it. I, like I said, it's not really psychic because it's really mostly about my family, my blood family. But I sense things, and I sense things before they happen. Or I, and I can't always, it's not like I see things or know what's coming. I just know that, I know, I know the general tone of what's coming. And so this past week, this past weekend, I knew something sad was coming. Something very sad. And so uh, my back was already hurting me uh, from all the back and forth and going and sitting up for, you know, an hour and a half doing the live and sitting in that certain position I didn't I didn't lean on the pillows like I'm you know kind of leaning on them now I didn't let them support me and I sat in the wrong position like I shouldn't have and so I'm paying for it with my back but um and then my right knee got in on it and it popped out of it's it pops in and out of whatever it does and and so it keeps me from being able to sleep and because the pain is just so bad that nothing I take helps but not, not, none of the the little salves or any of that stuff helps uh, because it's popped out. And uh, it just, anyway, so, uh, so I've been in a lot of physical pain. And then I felt this overwhelming sense of sadness. And it wasn't anything here at home. And I couldn't put my finger on it. And I just, I, I just felt it like a wet blanket, just sad, sad sad and then my mom called me the other night night before last and she tells me that my grandmother who passed away in 1999 her sister that was just under her because she has a baby sister named Elizabeth that's still living the only one still living out of eight kids that my aunt Shelby who was right above aunt Elizabeth has passed away and that their funeral was the next day Mind you, this is in Tennessee, 10 hour drive, at least a 10 hour drive. But her family, her kids, her grown children are not close with our side of the family. And her husband had long since passed away. So no one to call and tell our side of the family that she had taken a bad fall and had been in the hospital for a while and just never recovered. She was in her 80s. My grandmother would have been 87 this year. So, and, and they were stair-step children, basically, because there was eight of them. So they were really close in age, all of them. And um, and so now that all that's left is Aunt Elizabeth, who lives right close to my Uncle John, who 
you know, helps take care. I, she's pretty independent. She still has her own place and everything. Uncle John is just there so they, to take her places, take her, and they're, they're kind of running buddies, so to speak. And uh, so, like when I sent my Uncle John, um, like a couple of hats and a, and a and a cow for Christmas, he shared it with her. He gave her the the, the red red, white, and blue hat. And uh, so, I know this year when I send stuff to make sure I send Aunt Elizabeth something, but. Um, it just, and then the thought occurred to me, poor Aunt Elizabeth, now she is the only survivor of her whole family. My great-grandma and grandpa have been gone. Now all of her siblings are gone. Every single one. Uncle Rio, Uncle Charlie, all of them. All of them are gone. And what do you do with that? You know, I just... All I could do is pray for her because I'm not there to do anything else, you know, and uh, it just saddened me so bad. I, I, all, I could do, I, all I could do is pray that God takes the sadness off of me because I, I, it's, it's like a wet blanket and, and I knew that something was going on. I just didn't know what. But I knew it was in the blood family. I know because that's how my ESP works. That when good, good or bad, it's in, it's in, it's in within my family that something's happened, and and I just get the waves of it. And so I knew that it was something, and um, I hate that it was that. But that's, I mean, unfortunately, people get old and people die, and I wasn't close to her. But I did meet her a handful of times, and uh, she was still my aunt, you know. And it's still not not doesn't you know it's really sad that we couldn't we didn't even have time weren't even given the time to go and pay you know pay our respects to her. So that's you know that makes me pretty sad about that. But my mother was pretty upset, you know. And hearing my mom being upset, that doesn't help me. So, um, I don't know. I'm probably I'm gonna have to go pick up mom Friday and take her to lunch or something. But um, that's when we get paid again is Friday. So anyway, I just uh, wanted to kind of offer up an explanation as to why I haven't been in front of the camera. I know I've been in a couple of lives. I hopped in chat for a couple of lives, but I haven't uh, recorded any videos until today. So I wanted to kind of offer up an explanation for that. Is, you know, when you're feeling overwhelming sadness like that, you really, the last thing you want to do is get in front of a camera and talk. <laughs> Even though my, my recent visit with a mental health professional, she told me that this channel, doing this channel was my therapy. Did y'all know y'all are all counselors? <laughs> that y'all are all my counselors. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> but she said it was therapeutic, this channel for me. And I guess that's true because I haven't really been, felt lonely or, you know, really sad, deep sadness since I started this channel. So I think I'm, I'm feeling... The sadness I feel is really strange to explain because it's not my sadness I'm feeling, it's Aunt Elizabeth's sadness I'm feeling. And that's that's where it's hard to shake. It's when you're not feeling your own sadness, but you're feeling someone else's sadness. And that's that's the whole empath and ESP thing is that I can't shake it because it's not mine. You know? And I don't expect her to shake her sadness anytime soon, Aunt Elizabeth, at all. It just, you know, it's one of those things I don't expect her to be able to shake anytime soon. So, but, anyhow, I want to try to do a proper What's Up Wednesday video with y'all. Um, last What's Up Wednesday, I did uh, show y'all, like, a little strip of stitches that I was... Uh, 
doing my own pattern. Well, I frogged that because I wasn't happy with how that was going. Uh, I think maybe I jumped too soon with writing my own pattern, so to speak. The more I did, the less I liked it. I didn't like how it was kind of bunching up together and I needed more structure in it. So I'm not giving up. I'm just gonna do more of other people's tutorials and, and actually do do the stuff in the tutorials more so than just watching the tutorials. Uh, I did start, let's see, not this one. I had a couple of boo-boos and had to do undo some rows in the, the rainbow shawl and have I'm, I'm slowly getting that back in shape but i did start oh fiber flux i did start a rectangle shawl by her and um and i'm really liking this this is with the same yarn that i was going to do my um let me try to get y'all closer so that i don't jack my back up i did this thing but um uh, I've used the same the same yarn. I just frog when I frogged my pattern. I, I just uh, used the same yarn, the Super Saver um, Polo Stripe yarn. This yarn, but uh, this is I, I'll, I'll have to look and uh, see if I can find the tutorial to put in the link for this one. Uh, but this is how it's coming out. It's really beautiful. It's like a fan stitch. It's like a a V, sort of. Like a she calls it a fan stitch. Other people have calling it a V stitch. I I don't know, but it's really turning out pretty. But I'll just keep going until I run out of this. The, I got more. I got more of this yarn, so I can make it as long as I want to. But it's a rectangle. It's supposed to be a rectangle shawl. So. Um, when when she first said to chain, how many she said to chain, and I, I guess I was just <laughs> not quite grasping the concept of how she was going to do it, and I'm like, that's not going to be wide enough, and then it dawned on me that you're not making it, you know, I don't know, but I don't know what I was thinking, but I didn't realize that you were going to make it long this way, not this way. <laughs> <laughs> this is the length you go you grow the length this way but anyway i was i was just kind of still a bit half out of it i was just trying to distract myself from the back pain and that's how i was distracting myself and i want to thank miss penny at, at penley and creations for the tip about writing down your um your hook size on the ball band I, I really that's her tip that's something I caught on to from her 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 uh, channel uh, because I did a boo-boo on the the rainbow show and I'm going to show you what I had to, I'm going to talk about that here in just a second I'm put this back in the bag they're sharing a bag I don't have enough I don't have enough project bags to uh, to have to these <laughs> to have them in their own bag so they're having to share a project bag these two shawls are because I don't have enough project bags. I don't, I just don't. Yeah, I'm not sure where my British bag is. Oh, yeah, I know, I know where it is. I just don't know what's in it right now. Anyway. Um, but here is the uh, rainbow shawl. This is in the uh, tutorial cakes and candles. Uh, shawl by uh, My Secret Yarnery and uh, I'll try to find that tutorial and li link it down in, a, in the description but I'll, I'll try to link um, both of these in the description. I'll just uh, have to go back and do that um, after I upload it and I'll do that but uh, it's not an easy task. <laughs> I'll just, I'll figure out a way to do it because I always upload my videos from my phone but I can I, I I figured out how to do it. But um, anyway, um, what I had messed up with, and I, I would be further along in this shawl had I not messed up and grabbed the wrong hook. I'm using a four 
four millimeter hook here the G hook because it gives this nice little tight you know construction here now this yarn I think calls for a different hook let me see here no it says four millimeter it says four millimeter but I don't remember what that pattern called for it might have been four millimeter too I don't remember but I had grabbed the green because I'm using clover hooks right well I had grabbed the green 5.5 .5 millimeter <laughs> hook which is what I was using for this the um, the pattern that I was trying to write and I had grabbed it and used it on about three rows of this and then I was like oh and then it, and then it hit me oh my gosh I've used the wrong not not it what if it had been like a half a millimeter off if, if it had been like a four and four point five or something I probably wouldn't have uh, ripped it back and started you know st redone it but it was a whole you know it was quite a quite a difference and I could see that it was quite a difference and so I took them all out, I ripped it all I, you know I frogged three rows of this because I had done three rows, so I frogged back three rows and uh, and redid it. It took me a while, but I did. It was a mess, but I would be further along if, if I had done that. If I hadn't had to do that, I would have been further along because I do love this one. And I, this one is actually, I think, going to be for me, and I'm going to explain to you why it's going to be for me. I don't talk about my personal uh, preference as far as partners go obviously i have two children so i have been married to a man before but i am what's known as bisexual i like both men and women uh, i don't advertise that fact because i, I just that's my private business i don't uh, I don't wave that flag all around. It's just not something I feel like is anyone's business but mine. Um, I have had relationships with women. They've been kind of short and, and nothing committal, not, you know, not for a very long time. I was in a relationship with a woman many, many years ago, but um, her name was by chance also Amanda, but um, she kind of broke my heart, so I haven't been able to do that again, but a couple of years ago, I was in a relationship with a man who broke my heart. Like, really, really broke my heart. So, I mean, I just kind of swore off any sort of dating ever again. And I'm still in that place where I don't really feel like I want to put my heart... I'm, I'm not brave enough yet, or ever probably, maybe, to put my heart out there again for a man or a woman. So... I guess I haven't spoken about this because I don't really intend on dating again, period. Uh, I have my dogs, I have my sons, I have y'all. I really don't feel the need to add to that. Um, I'm pretty set in my ways. Uh, I like to control my, 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 my life, my how things are done in my life. I don't want to have to share responsibilities or share decisions with anybody. I don't want to have to consult anybody before I do things. All, that whole concept just boggles my mind. I just don't know if I could do that. So, I, it just... The, even the thought of having to consult with someone before I make major decisions just irritates me. <laughs> so, I just don't think I could do it. But I felt like I could explain why I think, you know, I, I really like this is Pride Month and that is my truth that I have been that way for I discovered it in my 20s that I liked both and uh, I'm not ashamed of it in any way, shape or form. I'm not ashamed. I don't think it makes me any less a Christian or a child of God. Um, 
I'm not going to, you know, <laughs> if the good Lord sees fit to send me somebody, male or female, and for some reason, some miracle of a reason, I decide I can't live without that person, and then lightning strikes and, you know, and that's just something that happens, that's that's fine. But do I, I'm not going to seek it, I'm not going to look it out, look out for it, you know, actively look for a relationship that's not something I really concerned to do as far as I concern as far as I'm concerned my life is full you know my my life is full fulfilled and, and you know and I got plenty to keep me busy I do not need a significant other but uh, if the good Lord decides that I do then that's what he'll do but until then I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Because <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy. I would say 97% of the time I'm very happy. So I think that's more than anyone else, any of us can expect or deserve. So anyway, uh, hopefully this hasn't been too depressing for anybody. Hopefully y'all don't jump ship on me because I, you know, came out. Uh, <laughs> the my people in my life, in my everyday life, like my sons know, my mother knows, people that are close to me around here in town, and and if anyone that actually knows me knows knows that. Uh, it's not something that I've ever kept a secret, but you know, y'all didn't know, and. Uh, I think I mentioned it on one of my lives, but I don't know that anyone quite caught on to it. I just, uh, those of you that might judge me for it or unsubscribe to my channel for it, then sorry for you. Uh, I'm not going to, you know, cry about that. I don't want judgmental people in my life or on my channel. That's not what my channel is about. It's be, uh, we're not about being judgmental over here. So... I don't judge people for the how they live or who they love and nor do I expect anybody else to either so anyway um, <laughs> I'll hopefully do some other videos maybe I'll do a live this evening or something I don't know it depends on how I feel I gotta go to town and get some groceries now because we don't have any <laughs> We really just need a few things to complete what we have. But um, I hope y'all have a good afternoon and a good evening. And I'll see y'all in the next video. And I may do a spontaneous live depending on what the comments look like on this video. But uh, sorry I'm not my normal boisterous self. The whole death in the family kind of put a damper on that. But uh, hopefully I'll feel better here in a little while. Um. I need to go check my sugar and uh, maybe take a breathing treatment, but uh, I'll be okay. Uh, I'll be okay. It's nothing, nothing severe. Just uh, got to take better care of myself. Uh, a bunch of us in this video. <laughs> anyway, I love y'all. God bless you. Uh, feel free to express your opinion. Um, your opinion is your own, and I and I I will respect it. If you decide to leave my channel, I I respect that too. That's fine. Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord, you know what. <laughs> it is what it is. But uh, talk to y'all later. God bless you. Love you. Oh, and adopt, don't shop. Your best friend is waiting for you at the shelter. They're the best dogs you could ever imagine, a rescue dog. They love you forever just because you rescued them. Most loyal and sweet companions you could ever hope to have. Uh, now I'm saying goodbye. <laughs> God bless you.